This rather tidy looking key fob belongs to a car called Rodney. Rodney is a car that currently resides down at the other end of the yard and I'm going to show him to you. And here is Rodney. This 2004 registered Rover 25 is a, a bit of a cacophony of the project drive and, and the bits that weren't project drive that were hanging on trying to keep Rover a good quality car. And I've never seen a pre-facelift car with a fob like that before. As you can see, this is a five door Rover 25. That means if you want to get inside, you have five different options available to you to get inside. And I've taken one of those options because it's raining. This is the car that I picked up with Boaty on Monday and I brandished this big folder of paperwork, original dealer brochure, to service books, to then stacks of paperwork, receipts for work done. And then, somewhere in here, all of the MOT certificates as well. And all in a big envelope, conveniently marked car. No confusion there then. This rain's making this video rather difficult to do. But looking through the rain, we can see that this door is free of dents, and so is this one. And this wing is free of rust, and that is actually quite an achievement. There is a slight, very slight dent there though. It has four turbine alloys, which are the worst alloys you can have, but at least they've got good tyres on. The front bumper does have just a couple of scuffs here and there, and unfortunately, the bonnet. What do I do? Do I replace it or do I leave it? The windscreen is intact and free of a green stripe. And amazingly, this side as well. No dents, no rust, no nothing. It's just a bit... That sill is going to require a little bit of attention, probably for its next MOT. But for the moment, it's fine. Let's close the door. The roof has been taped up so the sunroof can't be used. Although there's very little evidence of any damp going on. Oh, there is a bit just there. A bit of a stain just there actually, but it's not actually damp. Because this car only has 32,000 miles, the plastic steering wheel hasn't worn out. This is the really curious thing, these electric windows. Oh. Oh. Why is it opening now? I haven't got the key. Oh, I have. Um, that one doesn't really appear to be working properly. You can hear the motor and it pulls and goes. Yeah, it does that. It goes. I don't really want to do this. Oh, I'm not going to force it. Maybe with the. Well, it has got wind deflectors in place. Wind deflectors serve the purpose of helping you have the window open without getting too wet. Looking really cool if you like them and increasing the A-pillar blind spot if you don't. Personally, I don't like them. Half leather seats and that is super soft leather. Bolster's not worn. These are really, really unbelievably comfortable seats. Another reassuringly dirty, non-tampered with farted around with tarted up engine. It's just an engine where the dirty bits are kept and the coolant is the correct colour. The oil too, slips off your fingers without leaving dark deposits. But then of course it would do because the service history with this car is, as you've seen, pretty impressive. I just don't know what went wrong with this bonnet. Carpets, all dry and uh, quite clean as well. The boot has a switch and, well, has a button, has some bits in the back to sort out, and is dry. Some of the cars that Mustard and I buy, we end up thinking, oh dear, perhaps we shouldn't have bought that one after all. We escaped that one yesterday. But this one is very much 
one that even in the cold light of day, it's just as good as it was the day before. We are happy with this car. And this car will make somebody else equally, if not more happy, quite soon. It is a bit of an odd spec. And that doesn't do anything because it has a button there. It also has parking sensors, which work. It's going to make somebody a rather lovely starter future classic. And that's what I reckon. We've just got to decide about the bonnet. Should it be replaced? I've got plenty of bonnets that aren't rusty. They're just the wrong color. Nigel, starter pack anyone or an alternative? Where was I? Well, I was here two days ago, walking around this car, introducing you to it, showing you all of its good bits, pointing out the couple of minor not good bits, when the rain got the better of me and I thought, I'll come back to this. And now it's stopped. Although it was raining again just a minute ago. What I need to do is to decide the next step for this car because it is ready just to go straight out of the yard. So it's going to be down to cleaning it. It's not filthy, but it does need a wash. Although it's not filthy, it is, well, a bit dirty. And the wheels definitely need a good clean up. And that's going to be about it. I have noticed a couple of scratches actually, but they're nothing, nothing that big. Overall, the paint is in good condition, but it could do with a little bit of clay barring. I can feel it's got some rough bits on it. The thing I really don't understand at the moment though is the fob. Is it just a replacement fob or has it got a Pectron BCU in it? In which case, um, there's somebody who I know that wants to buy this car, won't want to buy it any longer. And it might be the same for many people as well. You don't want a Pectron BCU. But then again, they're perfectly okay, so long as they're perfectly okay. And sometimes they are. Sometimes they don't go wrong. Well, yeah, actually, they always go wrong eventually. This car doesn't have aircon, which means that if it did go wrong, at least you can get to it without having to dismantle a whole load of piping and stuff. It's going to come and stay at the other end of the yard because tomorrow, or the next day, or whenever it is that's going to happen, I shall actually give it that wash that it needs. Yeah, I'd be happy about that. I can imagine this car really appreciating it, and even saying so, saying, yeah, glad you did that. Oh, I forgot, I've just realized something. Why did it go down to that end of the yard in the first place? I'll tell you in one second. The radio next door has earned me a copyright claim. Oh! Stone! Ow! That means that from now on, if I want to do live streams in the yard, or just video in the yard, at this time of day, I'm going to have to go down there to do it. The really ironic thing about this, two songs, two songs I've had a copyright claim for. One of them is Saving All My Love, a song that I utterly despise. A sim oh gosh, these horrendous, dreary, miserable songs just make me feel fed up to the point of wishing I had somewhere else to work. And then to have a copyright claim off of that, there could not be a worse song to have a copyright claim on because of how much I utterly despise it in the first place. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it in my videos and I don't want anybody complaining that it's in my videos. I'll stop now. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining even though I am. Oh yeah, this video is supposed to be about that car, isn't it? And uh, I kind of got distracted. So, it's there, it's there. Give me a few days and it can be ready for somebody to buy should they want to do. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.